Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, Episode 626. What makes us heal after an injury or surgery? BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your host is Dr. Kathy Moffat, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging. Dr. Maupin is the author of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the award-winning book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of testosterone replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast. Today we're going to talk about something that you probably have never even thought about unless you've had surgery or you've had a car accident or you've had any other type of fall or accident, and that is how do we heal after we have something like that, a surgery or uh, an injury. And it's very important to know how you heal because I, <laughs> I just went through having a new shoulder plate replaced. I fell quite by accident uh, when I was in Mexico, and I um, actually tore three out of the four uh, muscles in my rotator cuff in my sh- right shoulder. And I was in pain and went through all kinds of therapy to try to fix it without surgery, and then I found that I had to have a shoulder replacement to actually make it better. So after nine months of um, having pain and going through different treatments to try to fix it without surgery, I went through surgery, and I was very well prepared because my surgeon, Dr. Yamaguchi, who is an orthopedic surgeon at Barnes in St. Louis, was my surgeon. And he gave me a six-week program on what to do before surgery and what to do after surgery to heal better and to heal more effectively without having to go through even physical therapy. In the end, I did exactly what he said, and I was able to Um, go back to almost normal activity at two weeks and then go back to complete normal activity at four weeks. He said I could play golf at four weeks. And I have had no pain ever since the surgery. It's been awesome. So I believe in his um, theory and also it's founded in science about what he told me and what I would like to relay to you about how how to heal. So if you think about it medically, When a surgeon goes in and cuts something, your stomach, your shoulder, and has to take something out or put something in, he or she is actually cutting apart your tissue, and he doesn't make your tissue heal. You make your tissue heal. So after the surgeon is finished uh, stitching everything back together, putting everything back where it should be, then it's up to your body to heal. And... Nothing he can do or she can do to make you heal better after that. They have to do a good surgery to actually be successful, but you have to heal well. And there's so many things that we do in our lifestyle that keep us from healing well. And there are also some things that you can do to heal faster or heal better, which I thought was very interesting when I read all of his instructions, because they included diet, activity, supplements. Um, His first recommendation was basically to load my diet for the six weeks before surgery with high-protein foods. And he wanted me to take between um, half of my weight in grams of protein uh, to all of my weight in grams of protein. So that would be 125 grams of protein for me for all of my weight. And that's what I tried to achieve every day. And he gave gave me examples, like he asked me to eat eggs and cheese and meat and and all kinds of things that you think or you are led to believe are not necessarily healthy, but they are very healthy and they're very necessary before surgery because one of the things that happens in surgery, not only do you have to take all of your energy to heal afterwards or and during, but during surgery, you're under stress. And so cortisol's being secreted and cortisol keeps you from healing, believe it or not. It helps you live through the stress, but it doesn't help you heal. So you have to have a really good body, a really good, all the, all the building blocks, all of the chemicals that you require to make your white cells and your, and your muscle and your 
connective tissue actually heal together, knit back together. So I did what he said. I ate a lot of yogurt, cheese, eggs, and then I also had protein shakes and G0, which is a protein drink with no carbs. Um, <clears throat> and I did eat 125 grams of protein a day, which was what he uh, suggested. He also suggested putting um, collagen in my coffee every day, which is 20 grams of uh, collagen, and that's, that is a protein as well, and one that your body uses to actually heal. So I did that as well. And that's, next recommendation was to eat fresh fruit and vegetables at every meal and, and to not eat junk food and not eat sugar. Sugar is the worst thing we've ever <laughs> done to ourselves. But it also, sugar is something that uh, prevents us from healing. Increases in blood sugar keep us from actually knitting our, our own tissue together. Diet drinks uh, have all kinds of chemicals that keep us from healing, so that's not good either. So sugared soda, diet soda, those are all off the list for if you want to heal, and alcohol is definitely off the list. Alcohol is a toxin. A alcohol is not a food, and usually it's mixed with something sugary to make it palatable, but it is not helpful for you to heal. If you're healing, if you are post-surgery, you shouldn't be drinking alcohol. Not only are you on pain meds generally, but you also are hurting your healing ability by drinking alcohol afterwards. Then your body can't concentrate on what it needs to concentrate on to get you to heal. There were several supplements that um, I took in addition to what he had recommended, and uh, I took the, I took the uh, supplements such as vitamin C, which cross-links your collagen, and vitamin A, which heals your, your skin and your um, anything on the inside, such as if they were operating on, your, on a woman's vagina, the A, A would help that heal. Or if you're operating on anything that has to do with skin, usually we have to go through skin to do any kind of surgery, then A helps you heal. Vitamin C helps your uh, connective tissue. Magnesium is good for your, is helpful for your muscles, as is zinc, selenium, and copper. So I made sure I had that in my in my group of supplements that I take every day, especially before surgery. But I added um, a couple supplements called quercetin. That you might know that because that's something that um, people use to prevent severe uh, COVID. Um, NAC turns into glutamine. And so that is one of the uh, amino acids, which is very good for you to heal. Bromelain and probiotics are also helpful for healing, so I suggest that. I also took those. I was told to start everything six weeks before surgery, and I was also told to stop taking all the medicines or supplements that I was taking, like fish oil, uh, vitamin E, uh, aspirin products. Stop taking that because that keeps your blood from clotting. And no surgeon wants to have somebody bleeding more than they should. So that was also very helpful advice and advice that I followed. Um, I think that the fact that I'd taken testosterone for 20 years and I have good muscle and I have good connective tissue and, and actually good bones, that all helped me heal. It helped him with the surgery, helped me heal, and it helped me become more active than many of his many of his patients can be because they start out not having testosterone. So women, as you know, women lose our testosterone in our mid-40s, men lose it mid-50s generally. And when that happens, um, and we the reason we seem to get older is that our immune system isn't working as well. Well we need immune cells to actually invade the area that needs to heal. So if we don't have as many, or if they're not as effective, then we aren't, going to, we aren't going to heal well. So taking testosterone stimulates the production of all of those things and increases your number and activity of stem cells. Stem cells are, you've heard of that in many different arenas, including political, but truly stem cells are, are cells that you have inside your body and you have more of them before you're 60 than you do afterwards. However, if you get your testosterone replaced, then your stem cell count starts going up and you're able to heal better. So because I had testosterone for all those years and because my stem cells have been activated for all that time, I have been 
blessed with being able to, to heal because I have kept up with my testosterone replacement as well as my estrogen. So the success of surgery is really dependent on your overall health. And if you can get healthy before you go through surgery, that is very important. I went through, um, I chose to go through physical therapy beforehand. I was in pain, so it did help me with my pain. And it helped me with my ability to, to use my arm and to, whoa, and to use, and to be able to basically go through all the motions of a shoulder um, beforehand, even though I was in pain and my shoulder wasn't working properly. But afterwards, I didn't need physical therapy because I had gotten all the muscles that were external to this, like the deltoid and, the, and um, some of the other external muscles, the triceps and biceps, uh, strong. So that helped me afterwards regain my range of motion, which I was uh, able to do. And is miraculous that because of the type of surgery he did, I didn't have to go through physical therapy and because of the healing. Other issues that I think I should mention that can cause your surgery not to heal very well, besides your condition, besides your health, is sometimes surgery can't fix something that is actually broken. So sometimes a surgeon, I used to be, I used to do surgery, I'm still a surgeon, I guess, um, and I used to do surgery and sometimes uh, a woman's pelvis would be so either damaged by infection, damaged by previous surgery, by other adhesions, by, by uh, uh, numerable things, endometriosis, that it would be almost impossible to be able to remove the uterus and not leave some scar tissue or some tissue that might cause her pain later. It's very difficult sometimes with you have what you have and then you have to do the best with what you have. There's other, there's other reasons that surgery may not work, and that may be that you have the wrong procedure for what your problem is. That is sometimes just one of the steps. You need to have this surgery before you have this surgery before you have this surgery. And that's something you should know ahead of time before you uh, start the first phase. Um, if you have diabetes, heart disease, autoimmune disease, cancer, or other chronic illnesses, kidney disease, it's very difficult or more difficult for you to heal. So the better condition you are in any of those ways, the better your doctor has gotten you as healthy as possible before your surgery, that is something that is very important for people who have those conditions to pay attention to before surgery. You shouldn't just show up for surgery, oh, okay, I'm here for surgery, and not do anything ahead of time. You should be prepping yourself. Um, poor nutrition, uh, smoking, COPD from years of smoking or just COPD that had bad luck and, and had damage to your lungs and you don't have good oxygenization, that is, the, that is a negative force on healing. You need to have oxygen to heal your tissues. P people have never exercised. I mean, you should exercise. Everybody should exercise every day for you to be healthy. And lack of exercise does set you up for not being healthy after a surgery, you have to have you have to be exercising before and after. So your best your best move before surgery is to do the things I did to get your nutrition in line. I lost ten pounds beforehand to lose as much weight as you need to lose to get to the stage where you're at your ideal weight, if possible. Take your testosterone. Take your supplements. Um, uh, if you uh, have different kind, one of those diseases that makes it difficult to heal, make sure the doctors that you see for that, those diseases know that you're going to have surgery and help you prep for that surgery. Uh, start your exercise program so that you will be in good condition to, to recover from the surgery or from, I guess you can't do that if you're having, uh, if you have a, a trauma because you don't know that's happening. Some of the, um, you should have blood work. I, I had blood work from this physician. Uh, ahead of time to make sure that I would heal and he made sure that I wasn't anemic and that my cortisol wasn't too high that my um, CRP was not elevated that's the inflammation in your body too much inflammation is not good for healing you just want enough so you shouldn't go into surgery with a high CRP you should, it, it may go up after surgery but it comes back down also blood sugar should be within range and your doctor can help you with that 
So you don't, your body heals itself, but it needs help, especially as we age. The older we get, the more help we need. And so the more we have to actually follow the rules. And you need at least a six-week lead time before your surgery, if possible, unless it's an emergency. So if you scheduled surgery, then you need a, a six-week lead time before you actually have the surgery to get your life in order. You need to not concentrate on other things, just concentrate on getting yourself healthier for the surgery. And then afterwards, your recovery will be shorter and more complete. And he's cleared me to play golf, which is amazing. Uh, that was at four weeks after my surgery. So I have complete range of motion from his procedure, which is, by the way, a reverse shoulder replacement. And incisions here, I can't even see it. So those of you who have shoulder problems, that's my story for everybody else who's planning surgery or may have surgery in the future. These are the things that can make you healthier afterwards and have a, a better healing process. Thank you for listening. I hope this helps, and we'll see you next week. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth.